Yes! What's good, New Light Guardians and returning players? I'm your host, 1LHD, and in this video, we're gonna touch base on what pinnacle weapons and or ritual weapons are alongside how to obtain them for yourself. So without further ado, let's get it in. The terminology of pinnacle weapon refers to a weapon that can only be obtained by fulfilling specific prerequisites in a particular activity. In the most bluntly explained way possible, you'll be tasked to grind the life out of either PvP, PvE, or Gambit to obtain all these weapons. All pinnacle weapons are unique in the sense that all of them are fully masterwork legendary weapons and have one unique trait perk exclusively on that particular weapon. As stated previously, there are pinnacle weapons available to be obtained from PvP, PvE, and Gambit. Ritual weapons are very similar to pinnacle weapons in the sense that they too are fully masterwork legendary weapons but do not possess a unique trait perk like pinnacle weapons do. However, ritual weapons have a total of four trait perks to select from instead of two static trait perks that cannot be changed. For example, the Vanguard Ritual Light Machine Gun Edgewise has both Feeded Frenzy and Field Prep in its first trait slot and Rampage and Demolition is in its second trait slot. Whereas the Crucible Pinnacle Grenade Launcher, the Mountaintop, has only two trait perks consisting of Rangefinder and Micro Missile. Ritual weapons made their debut in Destiny 2's 8th season and have replaced pinnacle weapons after Bungie realized how quote unquote powerful pinnacle weapons were. Pinnacle weapons reached the point to where they were so powerful and unique that they rivaled the power and uniqueness of exotic weapons and became staple weapons in almost every loadout. However, due to the fact that pinnacle weapons are legendary, you can equip multiple pinnacle weapons at the same time, unlike exotics which can only be equipped one at a time. If Bungie continued releasing pinnacle weapons every season, everything would inevitably get nerfed so instead of taking that route, the future introduction and concepts for pinnacle weapons were retired. This doesn't mean that the current pinnacle weapons in the game can no longer be obtained because they definitely can be. Right now, I'll go ahead and list all of Destiny 2's current pinnacle weapon and ritual weapons, how to get them, alongside which ones I would recommend grinding for first. The format we'll use for this video will consist of me talking about each weapon and on the screen I'll list off all the requirements of how to obtain them. So first let's kick things off with the PVE pinnacle weapons. From season 5 we have the high impact fusion rifle loaded question followed by Season 6's Precision Frame Scout Rifle Oxygen SR3 and Season 7's Wendigo GL3 Adaptive Frame Grenade Launcher. Be advised that you'll be spending a lot of time doing strikes to obtain these three weapons. However, I'll go ahead and cut to the chase and say that the Oxygen SR3 is literally not worth your time. This weapon was designed to clear trash mobs, at least as Dragonfly and Mega Neuro perk state so. The problem with the Oxygen SR3 is that it still feels lacking in PvE even after the PvE damage buff for Scout Rifles. Scout Rifles are a bit more popular in Destiny 2's present day Crucible, but I can bet my last two cents that this weapon isn't something that anybody will ever be using in the Crucible. If it isn't Mita Multi-Tool, Polaris Lance, J Rabbit, or maybe even a Night Watch, it probably isn't considered relevant at all if it's a Scout Rifle. The sad part about all this is that the Oxygen SR3 is one of the coolest looking weapons in the game but based on its underwhelming performance i would recommend just unlocking this weapon naturally and not going out of your way for it on my second account i completed all of the requirements to unlock this weapon by simply playing strikes and nightfalls over time literally never went out of my way to do any of the requirements to unlock this weapon loaded question on the other hand is a fantastic weapon its perk reservoir burst will cause its targets to explode if the killing blow is landed when loaded questions magazine is full loaded questions other trait perk is auto loading holster which automatically reloads the weapon when it's stole for about 2.5 seconds. These perks have insane synergy because you could shoot Loaded Question at a group of ads, switch to your kinetic or heavy weapon, then switch back to Loaded Question and repeat the process. Loaded Question is a true ad clear weapon and being the prior season predecessor of Oxygen SR3, it's hard to believe how hard the ball was dropped with Oxygen SR3 in regards to how inferior it is at clearing ads when compared to the Loaded Question. Last but not least, we have the Wendigo GL3 which is one of the best DPS weapons in Destiny 2. Wendigo GL3's explosive light perk increases the damage of its munitions when an orb of light is picked up. You can store up to 6 explosive light grenades at a time and due to how easy it is to generate orbs of light, it's even easier to ensure that you'll always have some extra damage in your magazine. For the longest time, the best single target DPS method in the the PvE meta has been the 150 RPM grenade launchers with spike grenades, but Wendigo GL3 does an amazing job holding its own. Moving on to Gambit, we have Season 5's Adaptive Frame Auto Rifle Breakneck, Season 6's Rapid Fire Frame Machine Gun, 21% Delirium, and Season 7's Bow Hush. Breakneck set a good precedent for Gambit Pinnacle weapons in the sense that it does an amazing job at what it's designed for. Rampage being one of the best and most reliable damage ramp up perks for Ad Clear, combined with Breakneck's Onslaught perk, which increases his rate of fire with each Rampage stat, 
makes this weapon incredibly reliable for clearing trash mobs. 21% delirium is also ridiculous at clearing ad waves, and I'm honestly willing to say that this machine gun is one of the best PvE weapons in the game. Its perk overflow literally doubles this weapon's magazine from 102 to over 200 when you walk over heavy or special ammo, combined with its second perk, killing tally, which gives this weapon a permanent damage boost until stowed or reloaded, enables 21% delirium to make short work of all ad waves. This weapon has earned a permanent spot in my loadout every time I'm running somebody through the zero hour mission due to how easily it shreds through arc shields. Gambit's pinnacle weapon from season 7 has never wowed me as much as the other two have, but that doesn't mean that it's lacking. First off, Hush is the only bow in the game that can get the open and shot perk, which is one of my favorite perks in the game. Open and shot grants increased range and accuracy the first time you fire your weapon. If I'm not mistaken, it takes about 4 seconds for the open and shot perk to reapply, so you will have to wait a few seconds before your next arrow can be affected by the open and shot perk. Hush's unique perk is called Archer's Gambit, which massively increases this weapon's draw speed after every successful hit fire precision hit. At first, I wasn't feeling Hush when it first came out back in Season 7, but after playing around with it, I started having a lot of fun with it. Archer's Gambit is an awesome perk because it rewards you for hitting rapid hip fire crits, and even though Hush will probably never be the most amazing DPS weapon, it's still capable of some decent single target DPS. The fact that you won't ever have to worry about aiming down sights and fully drawing your bow, you're saving a lot of time before the moment that Hush can actually do something. Snapshot is an amazing perk on bows, but it still requires you to fully ADS to receive the benefits of the perk. Hush doesn't rely on the time it takes to assume the ADS animation since you'll be hip firing the entire time. If you've been wanting to give bows a chance, I definitely recommend grinding for Hush. The only complaint that I had with going for this weapon is the fact that bows aren't necessarily the best in Gambit. Bows aren't good at clear weapons, so you'll literally be going out of your way grinding for Hush. Now, let's touch base on the PvP pinnacle weapons. Out of all the pinnacle weapons, these weapons are the most distinguished solely due to the fact that these weapons, in my opinion, are the only ones that are viable in every activity. Whether it's PvP, PvE, or Gambit, the Crucible pinnacle weapons are good no matter when, where, and how you use them. The original pinnacle weapon was known as Redress's Claymore, a high-impact pulse rifle that possessed the perks Outlaw and Desperado. This one debuted back in Season 3, which was the Warmind era. While Outlaw increases this weapon's reload speed after a successful precision kill, Desperado increases this weapon's rate of fire from 340 to 540, which cuts its time to kill down drastically. Regis's Claymore was retired after Season 3, but its Year 2 random role capable successor, known as the Regis's Broadsword, became available in Season 4. Regis's Broadsword is literally the same weapon as the Claymore, possessed at the same Outlaw and Desperado perks, but it has the opportunity to roll with random magazine and barrel perks. The Solar Damage Hand Cannon is known as Luna's Howl and Not Forgotten, also made their debut in Season 4. When these weapons first released, they were 180 RPM hand cannons that possessed the perks Zen Moment and Magnificent Howl. Magnificent Howl increased the damage of these weapons after landing two rapid precision hits, enabling their wielder to kill somebody on the receiving end and no less than three crits. At a point in time, it was possible to two crit kill somebody with these weapons. These weapons were the PvP Apex Predators from the time that they released all the way up until Season 7 when their RPM was changed from 180 to 150. However, they retained their precision frame and intrinsic perk. Even though Luna's How Not Forgotten are no longer capable of two tapping enemy guardians, they're still very much viable weapons. Being changed to 150 RPM hand cannons enables them to reliably kill enemy guardians with three headshots, which wasn't possible when they were 180 RPM hand cannons unless you Proc Magnificent Howl. The kinetic grenade launcher known as Mountaintop came into the spotlight in Season 5. Aside from the malicious birthright, Mountaintop is the only kinetic grenade launcher in the game. To add to its uniqueness, its micro missile perk causes its propelled grenades to shoot in a straight line with zero trajectory. This means that Mountaintop is literally an RPG. But wait, there's more. Mountaintop has a perk known as Spike Grenades, which is a perk available only on grenade launchers, which causes a grenade launcher's munitions to deal extra damage from direct hits. Spike Grenades combined with the micro missile perk made Mountaintop one of the best DPS weapons in the game. This was the first Crucible Pinnacle weapon to gain such a massive amount of popularity in PvE to the point where it was more valuable in PvE than it was in PvP. Unfortunately, Mountaintop's place in a PvE meta is still questionable in Season 8 after the change in auto-reloading methods through Luna Faction Boots and Rally Barricade. The Mountaintop was also able to deal so much single target DPS by use of a Well of Radiance or Rift under the effects of Luna Faction Boots or Rally Barricade because it would never have to manually reload. In Season 6, we were given the Nightmarish Recluse submachine gun. 
I refer to this thing as a nightmare because it has one of the most forgiving kill times in the game via its Master of Arms perk. Getting a kill with Recluse or any other weapon gives Recluse the ability to deal crit damage as body shots to enemies. In the Crucible, the Recluse deals 25 to the head and 25 to the body when Master of Arms is proc, which removes the penalty of hitting body shots, which would normally slow down your time to kill. Recluse also has the Feeding Frenzy perk, giving it insane reload speed after a kill. Mountaintop and Recluse are one of the deadliest duos in Destiny 2 and is a very, very common loadout. The idea is to shoot the mountaintop at somebody's feet to kill them, then switch the recluse to clean up any other opponents since Master of Arms will be activated. Now, sniper rifles were one of the most undervalued weapons in Destiny 2, so many people were happy to know that the Season 7 Crucible Pinnacle weapon would be a sniper rifle. The Revoker is a special weapon in the sense that it is a kinetic 72 RPM sniper rifle with a very short zoom scope, which has been requested by the community for sniper rifles in Destiny 2 for a long time, as well as having a snapshot perk, which enables it to zoom in almost instantaneously. Revoker's signature perk is known as Reversal of Fortune, which refunds a round back to the magazine if it ever missed a shot. This makes Revoker incredibly forgiving in the sense that you could miss a shot, wait a couple of seconds, and then get the round back that you missed. Alongside the fact that Revoker is in a kinetic slot and is a very high impact sniper rifle, you can easily shut down supers with one shot to the head. And due to the fact that Revoker is a kinetic weapon, you can use some of your more favorite energy primary weapons alongside it. At the time this video is going live, I only have one of the three new ritual weapons, that being the Vanguard's Edgewise. I'll be getting Gamma's exit strategy and the Crucible's Randy's throwing knife sometime this week, so when that happens, I'll make a separate video talking about the ritual weapons. Alright everybody, that does it for this video. Hopefully you learn a lot more about the pinnacle weapons, and good luck grinding to get them. If this video was helpful, and if you made it to the end, do me a favor and thumb wrestle that like button until it turns blue. If you're new to my neck of the woods, do me a favor and subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon so you don't miss a video of the most elite gaming content. But with that being stated, 1LHD is over and out. Y'all take it easy.